Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 15 of the Christmas Craft Countdown where I'm sharing 20 Christmas themed Cricut projects in 20 days. Half of the projects are designed by me and half are guest designer projects from some of my crafting friends. Today's project is one of mine and it's this layered cardstock design of carol singers. This design has lots of pieces to it to make up all the details in the three people, but it's definitely worth the effort as the end result is sure to put a smile on your face this Christmas. Let's get started. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. First, register a free ticket for the Christmas Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 23. Click any of the buttons on the page and enter your name and email to register. If you're already registered, check for an email from me with subject line Christmas Craft Countdown ticket information or any of the other emails from me that you have been sent throughout the countdown. Can't find them? Check your junk or spam box to see if they've gone there by mistake. These emails contain the link to view the countdown projects and download today's files. Scroll down the page to find today's project. Click the button to start the files automatically downloading to your computer or mobile device. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you've missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 23 bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Christmas Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. All downloads come in zip folders. You need to unzip them before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, it's time to get the STG file into Cricut Design Space. Open up Design Space and start a new project and then go to Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find the file on your computer or drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of the folder and then the file to choose is the one which starts SVG in the file name. Let's click and drag that in and it should look like this with all the pieces one on top of the other. If yours looks different and you see all the pieces next to each other instead, that means you've accidentally uploaded the wrong file type. So if that's the case, click cancel down here on the bottom right and try again and make sure you choose the one which starts SVG. Press upload. And then when the design appears in your recent uploads, click it to get the green border and then press add to canvas. It loads in at a good size to cut out, but if you want to resize it, first make sure the padlock icon is closed. If it's open, you can click on it to close it. You can then resize by typing a number in either the width or the height box, hit enter on your keyboard and the other measurement changes in proportion. There are lots of little pieces on this design, so I don't recommend going any smaller than about 5 inches wide. I think I will go for around 7.5 inches. And then that's all you need to do. Nice and simple. Click on Make It to separate out all of the different colours. And then you can change the paper size in here. You do need to do that for every single colour. And you can also move things about if you want to, to use up less space on your cardstock. And if it's put one little bit on a different uh, sheet like this one, you can click the three little dots and then move object. Make sure you choose the same color and press confirm. And then with a little bit of moving about and you may need to rotate it with this arrow, you can often fit the smaller bits on the other sheets. So now I'm only going to need two sheets of white instead of three. Don't worry that there's now an empty white sheet that will disappear on the next step. When you're happy with how all of your sheets are looking, press continue to connect to your Cricut and then follow the on-screen instructions to get everything cut out from cardstock. Here are all the pieces of my carol singers cut out and I've led them one on top of the other to check that I'm happy with all the colours and that I haven't accidentally lost anything as there are an awful lot of pieces in this design. We'll be sticking it together with a combination of glue and foam squares. The glue I'm using is called Kalal, which I really like because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some glues can do. And I've put it into this needle tip applicator bottle to make it easier to use. Barely Art Glue is another great alternative. 
The foam squares I'm using are from Dot and Dab, but any will do. These ones are quite small, which is going to be helpful, but if yours are bigger, you can cut them smaller with a pair of scissors. We need to start at the bottom and work our way upwards, so I'm going to move some of these pieces apart. Try and keep them vaguely in order, seeing as I've gone to all the hard work of putting it into position. And take this off in kind of sections. Now on this design, I really do recommend printing out the assembly guide, which comes included in the download folder, just because there are so many little pieces. You can see I'm dropping them. Actually, you couldn't really see it, it was kind of off camera, but I am dropping them all over the place. Okay, let's finally move them. Oh, that looks a bit creepy. <laughs> and now we're finally down to our bottom two layers, which is the white one and then the blue on top to make up the sky. And this one's nice and easy. It's a glue layer. So I've turned it upside down and I'll add my glue to the back. Right, that fits on there. Line it up with the tops of the music notes because it does have a white border all the way around the edge. If I pick it up, you can, oh, just lost, found another bit. Um, you can see, got that white border. So by lining up the music notes, you know that everything else is going to be correct. Right, so next we've got the bottom piece of our carol singers and this is going to be foamed on to start giving some dimension so let's turn this round and start adding the foam squares as well as adding some to all the little sticky out bits like hats hands and where the feet are you also want to make sure that you put some in the middle and a good amount too. And that's because if there's nothing in the middle, your cardstock will dip downwards like this because there's nothing to hold it in position. Whereas if we add some bits in the middle, it means it's got that nice firm kind of backing to it. Everything's going to stay beautifully flat and you'll get a much better 3D effect at the end. So even though it might seem like you're adding a lot of foam squares, it's definitely worth it as it will look better when you're finished. Now I've put all of those on, I can peel the tops off to reveal the stickiness underneath. Then this goes on here and line up the little, um, what do you call it? Pom-pom on the end of the hat and get that nicely stuck down. Next we have this piece and this is going to be glued on top. Or I could foam it to pop out the feet. Hmm, conflicted now. I think I will... Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to foam it. Yeah, let's give it that extra bit of dimension. The reason I was concerned about foaming it was so that you could still see the um, little bobble on the top of her hat. But I think it'll be okay. This is probably one of those optional ones that could be glued, could be foamed. Up to you. Let's put that in place. Gently drop it down like I just did because that way if it's not lined up like mine was not, you can move it around. If you've only just gently dropped it down, you can pick it up again and move it and then push down when you're perfectly happy. Next, I've got the boots to go on the person on the right. These are glue layers. 
people in there. And one the other side. Next, we're going to make up their faces. These are all glue layers. Got the little teeth bits in there, which we'll put in in a moment. But this one I'm going to glue. Then we've got the two little teeth pieces which are glued to the top of the back of this section. There's a little bit of glue above there. And then these kind of just overlap a tiny bit, one on each side. Turn it round to check. Okay, just about to see. And then the rest of it's glued onto what we've already got. Okay, that's their faces done. Let's move on to the hair. And these again will all be glued because there's already quite a lot of dimension between the hat, the little bobble on the hat and where we are with the hair. So I don't want to add any more foam to her because that'll make that gap too big and it'll be really hard to see the top of the hat. There we go. And then the fluff, fluffy fluff on top. Okay. Lovely. Okay, we got his hat too. To his hair first, which will be glued. Oops. And then the hat. And then the fluff on the front of his hat. And for his fluffy bit, I will add a little bit of uh, foam square to pop that out. I seem to have two bits of um, this fluff. I'm not quite sure why. I think uh, maybe I accidentally double cut it. <laughs> right, which way round does this go? There. <laughs> it's starting to come together. The next piece is the green one, making up um, her little shirt. So this one will also be a glue layer. Lots of the layers in this design are glued just because there's so many pieces that it would end up way too thick if we put too much foam in. But it's good, it means it comes together quicker, which is always nice. Next, we've got the purple layer, another glue one. Now we're just building up the details on the clothes of the two adults. This is her scarf. And then, oh, sorry, actually that was his shirt. The next layer, the pink layer, is her scarf. This is another glue one. Next, we're building his scarf, which will be yellow. Another glue layer. Now we've got this white piece. We're building up the pattern on the scarves. I told you there was a lot in this. And also, this is the top of the bobble of the child's hat too. And then we have red, some stripy scarves going on. 
feel like this design does how many pieces can we put in? And the answer was lots. There we go. I've been calling this scarfs and actually it's probably coats really. Getting myself all modelled. This is definitely scarves though. Sometimes it'll kind of start looking the same when you've done so many designs. Start forgetting which one is which. There we go. This is getting so thick. All right, next is this, which is their um, books that they're holding. So they're uh, little hymn books. And I think for this one, we can maybe get away with foaming it. Or I could foam their hands. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I think I'll glue it. <laughs> This is getting super thick. <laughs> okay. But their hands with their little gloves on. You can add a bit of foam. One last pop of dimension for the adults. I may have just swapped that around the wrong way because he's got a red scarf, so he should probably have a red glove. But never mind, they can switch. All right, next we're going to start building up the child and this layer, this black layer, will be a foam square layer. Make them pop out so it really looks like they're stood in front. Will that fit? Oh, just. <laughs> Don't forget, you can always cut your foam squares smaller if you need to. One on there. And now we've got all of these pieces to build up. So next we have this one. Then we have the front layer with the cheeks cut out. And most of these now are going to be glued. We've got the purple layer over here. And then pink on top. And then we have the blue making up the shirt. There we go. A darker blue for her coat. A pink for the scarf right at the top. Then we have the book. And to stay consistent with the adults, we'll glue this one on. And then we'll add foam for her mittens. While that's drying, I'm going to do her hair and hat first. So we've got the black for the hair. Then the yellow hat. We're so nearly there. <laughs> okay. It's a little bit far away from her bobble, but I think it still looks fine. We've got a little bit of fluff on her hat. There. And then little bits of foam for her gloves. And I just moved that because it still wasn't quite dry. And 
that's the people all done. Just these music notes to go and I'm going to foam all of these to give it some nice dimension. I'm not going to try and get my foam squares into those narrow bits, just at the bottoms where it's a bit thicker. So I'm not worried too much if those ends drop down. I don't think they will though because they're not that big. The bits of card aren't that big, so it should be okay. You could cut your foam squares really narrow to put into these gaps if you want to. If you're braver than me. <laughs> yeah. I always get really excited with a complex design when you when the end is in sight, which it definitely is now. Oh, stuck this one to my fingers. <laughs> it goes there. And then one left. Stink the last note on. Da da da. Oh, no, it missed. Ah. <laughs> Spoke too soon. There we go. And that is our carol singers. God, that is weighty. And they're all finished. Just look at all that depth. It doesn't quite stand up by itself, but uh, not a lot in it. Just look at all of that. I love it. It's so colourful and Christmassy. There's so much in this design that's going on. And I think it's just lovely. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make carol singers out of cardstock. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more cricket crafts and Christmas fun. I hope to see you tomorrow for day 16 of the Christmas craft countdown. Don't forget the link to get the cut files for this project is craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 23, but they are only free to download for 24 hours after this video goes live. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.